I found this in a uh, Gunner room. Uh, uh, Gunner mirror at me. What is it? Well, it's, um... It's... Sick performance. <laughs> folks for coming out to the 100th episode of Synthaholics. Special show for you Trekkies. We have tonight Captain Kirk's stunt double Aaron O'Brien performing live his comedy bit. But first, our top five Star Trek jokes. Number one. How do you get a one-armed Klingon out of a tree? Wave to him. What is Riker's dating philosophy? If at first you don't succeed, try Troy again. What happened when Yeoman ran and complained that someone had cut a peephole in her cabin door? Captain Kirk promised to look into it. What did Worf say when small ice asteroids began hitting the Enterprise hull? Kirk, they're being hailed. Why is Kirk a better captain than Picard? One word, hair. Kirk never drinks tea. Kirk once fought a Greek god and won. Kirk traveled through the Great Barrier, met God, and wasn't even impressed. Plus, Kirk's bridge is not big. Thanks, folks. That's it for tonight. Enjoy your 100th episode of Synth Hollis. This was brought to you by CreativeZenith.com. And thank you for that great introduction, Will. Yeah, Will Rodriguez. He is a fellow artist here in Buffalo, New York, and he's released a comic called The Supernal Event, and he's got the first issue out. He's almost ready to release a second issue. Super talented. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. He actually he gives me advice on my art all the time, lets me know when I'm doing good and when I'm screwing up. So uh, he's a great guy, and I, I couldn't believe you actually put that together for us. So thank you so much, Will. That's really nice of you. Yeah, it's extremely a, creative. Yeah, it's, it's really great. And uh, apparently, yeah. you have a stand-up bit for us tonight, Aaron. I do. <laughs> Prepared to be disappointed. <laughs> the stunt I, double, man. The stunt double. I, that's what I say all women before we go to bed. Prepared to be disappointed. <laughs> and your Zap Brannigan voice. <laughs> My Zap Brannigan voice. Anytime I talk to a lady at the bar. I use my Zap Brannigan voice. Well, it's me, David Duncan, with Aaron O'Brien and Guy Davis tonight. Hey, happy 100 episode. Yes, 100 episodes. I haven't been here for all of those. No, you haven't, but uh, you've been... But you guys have. Yeah, but you've been here for quite a lot along the ride. At yeah, least, at least been, halfway. It's been an interesting yeah, it's ride, I have to admit. <laughs> well, last January, I think, was your first episode when you talked about your comic. Yeah, I think it's been a year. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's true. Yeah, you've been you've been part of the show for a year now. And and oh. guy and guys like, why did you pick me up on this ride? <laughs> <laughs> and when are you gonna let me off? It's like he yeah, came on. Where's he the came stop? On. Where's the stop? He agreed to come on once as a guest, and we keep dragging him back in. Well, <laughs> but it's been an awesome dragging back in, though. I mean, you got to admit, if you don't know the backstory, and I don't know the exact episode, uh, guy actually when I came on the ep- uh, our show, but I was a longtime fan of the USS Tamberlin that he's been doing. I've been following it for a long time, and when we started the podcast, you know, we were just talking about guests who we get get on. I said, well, I've been reading this web comic for a long time. I don't know if the guy would be interested. But uh, <laughs> but I but apparently I lured him in with candy and uh, your serial killer van <laughs> and my serial killer van. So you, you still haven't got awesome. you still haven't gotten like the, uh, the 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 rapist like trench coat thing yet. I'm like, working on it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's new. It's, I, I got to beat up somebody for that. So <laughs> it's, it's hard on the streets of <laughs> like the streaker, the streaker jacket. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You flash I'm, people. You've been talking about running on the woods naked as far as uh, Patreon goes. So. 
<laughs> well, anyways, welcome to Synthaholics 100 episode. If you haven't already noticed, we have reached the 100 mark, uh, and it has been an exciting ride. It's been a lot of fun. We've met a lot of great people uh, and just interesting stories, and I don't know, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, think about it. everything that every everyone we've talked to. Yeah, we, Carl Miller uh, twice. Twice. We had Vic Mignana. We had Michelle Specht. Yeah. Uh, Kitley Brown and and James Kerwin. Yeah, we had. Um, they were a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, we had Bonnie Moss. Bonnie Moss. Uh, yeah. Larry Nemechek a couple times. Yeah, he graciously came on our show. Um, we had uh, a good old checkoff. Yeah, Walter Koenig back like oh, I was like our like six, seventh episode, sixth or seventh episode we had him yeah. on there. So I with mean, Todd Chante from the yeah when they were trying to do the Captain Pike. Uh, I don't know if thing. that's still around anymore. I, I, I heard almost nothing about it in quite a well, while. I think the Axonar thing buried a lot of people's dreams. So yes, yeah, buried the fan dreams. Too. But um, yeah, so hundred episode. Uh, we're still alive. We're still kicking, as we said before. Uh, I think an episode or two ago that. You know, nobody can cancel us because uh, we're just a bunch of geeks that. Uh, I think it was the last episode that we're just gonna like, like we can't be canceled. Only our only our souls can be trotted on until we. Uh... Yeah, and our souls won't be crushed because <laughs> nobody understands that we're geeks, and our souls were crushed a long time ago. So we just I, keep going. I mentioned the wedgies and oh yeah, and, and saving Cheerios for um yeah poor guy saving <laughs> eating all the Cheerios for his uh for his stickers yeah even yeah, even, even if you're not. Traumatized. Yeah, guy. Even if you're not on the episode with us, we probably reference you at least once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that Cheerio story was golden. I, I still laugh every time I hear it. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So here we are, uh, still kicking. Uh, here's to the next one, episode. next 100 episode. Cheers. Click. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, you're miles and miles, miles away. away. We tried to. I'm like. 1500 miles away but that's all right that's it all right. was you know mental mental cheers it was a mental cheers so over the last couple of weeks we've been asking people to submit emails or voice messages yeah. to kind of let let um let the listeners be heard tonight uh for the hundredth episode so they can you know say what they wanted to say about star trek and, and join the conversation yeah or even just make fun of us yeah or or that too which is uh, totally acceptable cuz uh, we're all about having fun here <laughs> yeah we didn't we asked for 100 i think we fell a little short of that but just 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 a wee bit <laughs> just a wee bit short but uh we did get some responses and it was very nice and we do appreciate and we're going to be uh playing some of the some of the responses some reading some emails and just just talking about our love of star trek and our love of our fans yeah. and listeners yeah so good stuff. But uh, first, you know, um, as we are always breaking a uh, new Star Trek weeks late because of just the way podcast <laughs> re- recording schedules work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, by the time we, you heard the news in the last episode, there was new news, such as they had they just released a like behind the scenes sh- like trailer sort of yeah. for, for Star yeah. Trek Discovery, yeah, uh, which looks kind of interesting. I mean, it's real short. Most of it's like like a bunch of. Uh, uh, photographs and you know saying Gene Roddenberry wrote Star Trek is dot dot dot. Yeah, I, that to me makes me feel like they're going to totally change what Star Trek is. Like because they're kind of really? let to me. I, to me, I kind of feel like it because they're like they're, because he wrote Star Trek is dot dot dot. And they, they made a, a note of saying that, and then they're going to say, we're starting that again with Star Trek Discovery. So, like, to, to me, I, to the way I'm reading into it is that I feel like they're going to take lots of liberties on what, what Star Trek is huh. with, with the new series. Because why would they go with that Star Trek is dot, dot, dot type I don't know. Maybe mentality. make us all realize that they were going back to the, the, the original. I don't know. I, when, I, when I saw that, I thought, wow, you know, we're, we're trying to... Hold on to our roots here. I don't know. There goes there goes guy trying to be positive. I'm trying to be positive. I'm holding on to the Roddenberry oh. belief. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just think that um, going forward, I, I think the new series is going to be a soft reboot at the very least, if not like a a more in depth reboot. Then uh, it's just. It's going to be at least a visual reboot of the entire series if they're starting back in Kirk's era. Right. Well, we got the... Or 10 years prior to Kirk. Uh, we got the announcement that Emily Coutts, I think that's how you say it. Coates or Coutts. I'm not quite sure how it is because it's outs with a C on Yeah. It. Maybe it's Coutts. Coutts. Or maybe it's Coates. I don't know. Uh, so she is going to be Helmsman. 
Uh, she played in Crimson Peak. She was Eunice. If you didn't see Crimson Peak, it did take place partly in, in Buffalo. Buffalo. In Buffalo, I which, couldn't believe that. Which was pretty pretty awesome. To, you know that we got a little shout out by uh, in, in, a, in a Hollywood movie in, in our town that's you know bar- pretty much barren now. Yeah, yeah. No, there used I, to be lots of factories here. Now they're. It used to be a pretty. We used to be a big deal. At one yeah, point. We, yeah. At one point. I don't know. I I, I say you know to people. Oh, I. I, uh, I'm on a podcast at a Buffalo. Oh, really? That's cool. You know, so at least people know you still exist. Yeah, no, they, they do. Well, it's an unusual. It's an unusual name too. Buffalo, named after a big hairy animal. Big hairy animal. Yeah. You know, yeah. there was no buffaloes in this area. No, there's lots of buffaloes. They're just all like styrofoam, plastic. Yeah. No, but that <laughs> was there resin. Lots of styrofoam buffalo. Uh, there were no They're buffaloes all over the place. So the the origin of buffalo is supposedly that when people came to the uh, the river. And the Niagara River, and they saw it. the The French that discovered this area first, they it was they it was named for a river called uh, Bu, as in beautiful flow, Bu flow. Ah, and it got slowly just changed to Buffalo. It doesn't look that beautiful now, <laughs> unfortunately. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So anyway, so yeah, uh, not so much Bu of the flow. Gotcha. But anyways, Emily en- uh, Cots, Cots. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anyone. I'm was going really with Couts. I'm okay Couts. with that. Couts, yeah. I mean, I, I can't remember which character she was in Crimson Peak. Um, was she the sister? Yeah, she, Eunice. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I thought she was a pretty good actress. Yeah, she was. She was. She was good. And I can't think of like, you know anything else she's been in, but I'm like, eh, you know, she's got a couple things under her belt, um, but you know, it's nothing, um, nothing huge. Not. I mean, obviously, Crimson Peak was the biggest one that she was in. Um, at least the one that Star I Trek, saw. Star Trek. It'll definitely be Star Trek now. Yeah. Oh, oh, as far as as far as we're concerned, deal. yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And hopefully, the show will go on many seasons, and it'll be her biggest thing she's known for. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. so for us. Um, so cool. We're getting more stories out of the uh, Discovery Camp. Hopefully, we'll get more information as time goes on. They they showed some armor in that little trailer that looked like I guess it's against Kling- Klingon, Klingon armor. armor. It looked like Klingon armor. They, it looked like scary. Like I like it way yeah. better than the than the JJ uh, Klingon armor. Yeah, it, looked, it looked pretty brutal. It was cool. JJ was okay, but yeah, it just looks like they were wearing just big flat pieces of leather. It didn't look scary at all. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, that's well. So did the Christopher Lloyd reboot of the the Klingons. They were, you know, it was cool looking, but it was just leather. Yeah, but it didn't look like. I mean, it didn't look like. I mean, the the crystal. You had the, like the the back ridges or like. Oh yeah, it, yeah it, it cool. you know it looked like it was like you know metal yeah. put together. And it, sure, it was leather, mm-hmm. but you know practically. But I mean, it's supposed to look like metal. You know, I don't know. I thought it looked cool. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, not so much with the JJ. Um, I mean, I love the you know, the movies he did were fine. I just didn't like the way the Klingons were redone as far as their clothing went and yeah. their stupid helmets. Hopefully, they won't have stupid. Yeah, helmets. Yeah, the, the full full face helmets. Yeah, I'm like that's stupid. It was cheating. That's that's they very didn't cheating. Want to do prosthetics, right? <laughs> I heard they did do prosthetics. They had to wear prosthetics and that thing. I'm like, what's the point of wearing the prosthetics? Well, what's if the point if of that? They're being covered. Yeah, right. Well, it's like put the guys in the back. They don't need to do any prosthetics. But they but they were all wearing the helmets too. Yeah, that's yeah. so dumb. But um, it's it's exciting. And that, that behind the scenes thing was really cool. They showed like some of the sets and the sets being built. Being and built. Yeah, it's going to be. They had the close up of the uniform and the. Uh, I hope the Delta Shield with that the line running through gotta it. I admit, I like that new uniform. Just what I've seen with the gold, it's and so the, crisp. And the navy blue and the gold. So, guy, do you think they're going to have like the the color divisions? So, do you think they're going to have the blue? The doesn't look like the, it. The red. No, because that's the 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 shield had an engineering bar on it, and it was a blue uniform. Yeah. So okay. I think they're going to be trying to go for the Enterprise connect. They're trying to make it look like Enterprise, so it's a connection between Enterprise. I guess, but it's like they're getting so close to Kirk's era. I don't know why they're sticking with Enterprise ish well, looking uniforms. And if you think well, back to uh, Helmsworth when he was Kirk's dad, they were all kind of the they same had that color. Blue, yeah. yeah, they had the same color. And I don't, I don't know if that was probably what twenty some years before Kirk. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know the exact, you know, but I'm assuming it's got to be yeah, twenty I mean, some it, years. And it could be anything. I mean, if it's ten years before Kirk's era, then theoretically that's five years after the Cage. Yeah. So we could be just dealing with different uniforms. I mean, you know, it's not like if you were to look at our current military, I mean, they've got like six different uniforms yeah. that they wear. You and they change know. so slightly every couple of years, too. And the Del- yeah, they, yeah, I mean, it's it's it, it, I could see that being a 
I, especially since I mean, one of my 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 best friend is a major in the army, and the number of times that they just reinvent the entire stupid battle dress uniform that he has to wear. Yeah, right. right. And he has to like change out everything and all of his patches and everything and all of his rank and. You know, everything has to be swapped out. So actually, I totally think that that could be a we've decided to retro back to Enterprise for this year. And the next year, we're going. no, no, we didn't like that. No, no. You know what we're going to do? All the different colors. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do colors. But it could be. I mean, there's been discussion whether or not the Discovery, because the original teaser trailer showed it like hidden away in some asteroid, like maybe there's Section yeah. 31 yeah. or like some other branch off of Starfleet. Who knows? Um, right. Maybe that's why their uniforms are different. You know, there's, yeah, uh, we, it's don't, we, we still don't know anything, you know, concrete about it. And maybe the other ship that Michelle Yeoh, since she's another, she's the captain of the other ship that's supposed to be in the show, maybe um, yeah. they'll have more traditional uniforms than the people on. The Discovery, who knows? Maybe they're like the Batman and Batcave of Star Trek. <laughs> the Batman. So they have... The Batcave of Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the Batcave, asteroid. Right. Uh, well, should we do another... Uh, do we have like a tweet or something? Let's do a tweet. All right, let's do a tweet. A tweet. I'll read a tweet. It's 140 characters. Uh, actually, uh, Guy, I got... Uh, one of the first response I got from a tweet uh, from here was... Uh, Actually, a gentleman, let's see what's here. Da, 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 da. His name is Ticking Cancer Bomb. Well, I, that I don't, just is not good. I don't know if he, he had cancer. If you do, I am sorry. Uh, but it said, uh, back in the day, I ran a Star Trek RPG with 18 people, about 20 hours. And we had a, we had to ju- people had to jump over the table to hug each other when they won. And I asked him if it was the uh, FASA R- R- RPG and he said it was the mid '80s, and I believe so. He said the Federation players had the Yorktown from uh, Star Trek: Next Generation, since I refused to let them have two Enterprises. So <laughs> it says he's still he. I guess he lives in the Denver area. Is that are you? In, yeah. Are you in Denver? Or are you in Boulder? I'm in Denver. Yeah, so he might be close. Yeah. So. But yeah, so I I used to play the FASA. I know Dave, the um, guy that you still play that once in a while, don't you? Yeah, actually, I, I um, there's a there's a group here that meets with it and that plays the old FASA system. In fact, there's a convention coming up in two weeks, Genghis Khan, awesome, which is gonna where we're all gonna get together in one of the rooms. It's it's a role playing game slash well, I guess it's just kind of an all gaming convention. But yeah, yeah, I don't I don't I never participated in a. 20 person game. <laughs> well, it was obviously just the Starfleet battle side of it, which actually right. was the strongest part of the FASA thing. I always thought the character uh, part of the game was a little weak. Didn't, did you feel the same way as, as that? Well, um, we're currently playing the, the character side of it. And I guess, you know, my feeling on uh, RPGs in general is that in the 80s, we were still kind of sussing it out. We still had like you know, oh, yeah. D&D, yeah. echoes of D&D. So people had to think, gosh, it's not complicated enough without Thacko. So let's put <laughs> this in. And, you know, it's like so it was like all math. And then it wasn't until like 2000 or something like that when the role playing game people were like, you know what? Do we have to be all math heavy? I know. Well, so I think playing anything from those eras is still kind of one of oh my, my God. One of my uh, the heaviest one was the uh, early '90s was uh, Shadowrun. The, oh yeah, the rules. I loved the game, but the rules just seemed so so dense. It was hard for me to get yes. through. And then it was like, oh, how many dice do like we D, have to roll just, on this just one? Like D three point five uh, for Dungeon Dragon three point five. I mean, Pathfinder. there's so many rules. Well. Yeah. Well, Pathfinder was technically three seven five, but yeah, yeah. there's just so many, but yeah, so many but I mean, rules like and checks and everything. Shadow Run with with like seventy zillion dice. Yeah. Um, and then then uh, ICE Iron Crown, which had uh, mm-hmm. you know all of the you know the, the uh, Middle Earth role playing and stuff like that, and they had tables after tables after tables after tables. <laughs> right, right, right. And it was D tens as far as the eye can see. And like yes. the uh, going back also the original. Um, I don't know if it's the original, but the uh, Star Wars RPG uh, by uh, yeah. by West was it West End Games or West End Games? Yeah, yeah, it was all D six, and it was a little more manageable, but it was a little boring as well. 
<laughs> because I mean, the, I slept through it. the game mechanics was a little boring. Yeah, it didn't yeah. have. That's any... why I was always a fan of the D twenty system because it had all the dice in it. Yeah, like it... the D ten system, you only use D tens. I'm just like, oh come on, that's boring. I don't mind just it, like one type of dice, but it does get a little bit like uh, it could be a little more fun throwing some extra dice in there. But um, it, the heavy rules. But yeah, so the FASA Star Trek, from what I recall, and this is like 80s going into early 90s this when i played was the character side of it was a little bit like a hundred dies and stuff like that it was all 100 percentile rate and it was a little like there just wasn't a lot developed other than just you know oh yeah you know there was it it really was pretty reliant on characters to pull it through yeah (laughs) and then uh but the the starship the starfleet battles was amazing because fasa was amazing because they did battle tech and they did a whole bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, you know, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, so uh, yeah, Star Star Trek: The FASA game, awesome. Um, I know there was a, another Starfleet battle game that came before that, um, but I don't know who made that. Do you know who made that guy? Amarillo Design Bureau, okay, which did Starfleet Battles, um, which used to be called Task Force Games, but now they're called uh, Amarillo Design Bureau, and they they're still around. Did they reissue they're, that? Yeah, I mean, the, they they've evolved. Um, they made a uh, SFB was it, it's still out there, but they made a, a lighter version of it called Federation Commander, which is actually easier to play. Okay, you know because SFB was brutal. I mean, it, it was a lot of rules. It was great. It's one of I mean, it was one of my favorites. Um, but it was it was a brutal brutal game to play. I mean, you had books and dice, and it was horrible. Well, it wasn't horrible. <laughs> I guess I, I, I overstate. overstayed. It was, it was intense. Still, is what you're trying really to say? Intense. Right. And I like FedCom better. It's a, a much uh, lighter, lighter game. Right. But you can't do things like board with Marines and you know take over ships and stuff like that, like you can do with Starfleet Battles. So, gotcha. It's not gotcha. Quite as good. Nice, so. nice, awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and do the next clip. Hey, Synthaholics Podcast, congratulations on your 100th episode. This is Carla, and I have to just say that uh, that I have several favorite moments uh, from the podcasts, and one of them would be uh, the one which was episode 77, Oh Shuttlecraft, Where Art Thou? I thought that was great, and I thought it was so indicative of the spirit of Star Trek in general in the fandom. Uh, It's just been an amazing juggernaut going into its almost 51st year. Uh, it inspired my cousin, who was the very first Trekkie I ever met. It inspired my friends when we were kids uh, to ask their grandpa to build them a console to replicate the bridge, and he did, and we got to play Star Trek. How awesome was that? And as a girl, I didn't get relegated to just girl things because these boys understood that Ohura and Nurse Chapel had some serious clout. Uh, anyway, congratulations, guys, and uh, I can't wait for the next 100 more episodes. Cheers. Well, thank you so much, Carla, for, for sending that in. That was uh, a lot of fun. And, and the, your, one of your favorite moments in Star Trek, uh, for our, as far as our podcast goes, Shuttlecraft for Arthur, that's all. That's all on That's guy. all guy. That's guys. Um, I wasn't even it, on that episode. Yeah, I, and, and I was on that episode, but like I was like, uh, I'm like, what do I need to do? And he's like, I've got the notes. I'm like, <laughs> well, I've been tracking that that shuttlecraft forever. Guy just like said to Dave, "Shut your pie hole, and I'll just talk it." So I'll walk you it, was gr- it was great. <laughs> so that way, as yeah. It yeah, and it was great because you like you, you like winged it for like thirty minutes, and I lost like half the episode because of because of recording issues. And, oh. then you, and then you found your notes, and then you're able to go back. You to know, it with accurate notes, so it all it all worked out. Even though I lost like ten minutes of it, it it, it works out. But you just don't know. It, this is a side of things that a lot of people don't know, the, the the podcast that Dave puts in a lot of work that y- you wouldn't even know he does yeah. because he makes it oh, seem like he, he – you know, it's like, yeah, I just showed up and we just recorded this. No, Dave edits things. He makes sure it sounds good. He makes sure that you actually hear it correctly. I mean he's done so much homework and everything. So a lot of props to Dave as well. But yeah, that episode – 
Oh Shuttercraft, where art thou? It was fantastic, and it was all it was all uh, all guy, all guy, all the knowledge he, of he, guy. He brought his notebook, and and he and a great a great topic. It was super interesting. I was just like enthralled. I was probably just as enthralled as I loved it. To it. It was great, and all the well, the, the wacky. And background. I was just and I was just like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was like, what should we? What do you want to do a show on? And I was like, I was just looking through all my notes, and I found all the notes on the Galileo. Do you know where the Galileo has been? And he was like, no. <laughs> was like, Let me tell you. <laughs> all excited. I didn't, I didn't mean to take the entire show over. No, no, it was, it was fantastic. It like, was a great, I, a great episode. I, I'm so glad you took that and ran with it. It was amazing. I'm glad I could be there and just sit in an awe. I'm like, that's awesome. That's awesome. I hope I, I contributed something to the episode. <laughs> that's pretty much the episode. <laughs> totally. the, the whole episode is, that's awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> Really? Well, I was the was audience. I was the thing, protagonist cause... in that episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was, it was, anyway, it was an interesting episode. What I loved about what Carla was saying was that she managed to get her grandfather to build a bridge set. That was awesome. That's that awesome, cool. too. Yeah. yeah. That is very awesome. Hey, Carla, if you have pictures of this bridge set, they, they, they know, need to be totally. sent to us. Send it to us. Yeah, especially if you have one that, like, you guys are all dressed up in uniforms as kids. It'd be hilarious. Edo uniform. <laughs> What is it? The Edo uniform. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I don't think they dress like that. Uh, there's some games they weren't. <laughs> I don't know how to play those games. I don't know how to play that game. The stick about yay big. <laughs> and this long. Yeah, Carla, thank you so much uh, for for listening. And uh, for... She was our fellow coworker back in the day. Yeah, she was. She was very nice that you actually uh, ch- chimed in. And, and she listens them. to us. Thank you. I know. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Why would you keep listening? No, just joking. Uh, I don't I think know. That was cool. Yeah, that was great. It's it's awesome that uh, uh, getting to play Star Trek as a kid. Like I, I it's something I haven't talked about in the show before. As far as like you know, playing Star Trek goes, I uh, I don't think I've talked about it anyway. Um, when I was a kid, uh, there's another kid in, in my school who also liked Star Trek, and like we lived close enough to each other where we were able to hang out sometimes on the weekends. And like uh, he played Kirk, you played Yeoman Rand. Yes, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was very kinky. No, we but we had um you know those you know those on the shoulder video cameras, and like we tried to make like Star Trek movies. Oh, really? And all, all the special effects were basically done with toys and, and cardboard boxes. So like if we had right. an engineering disaster, we'd put the characters in the cardboard box right right and we'd shake the cardboard box that's awesome i had a i had a model of the enterprise that lit up and had lights and and sounds and stuff like that so right. we did that for the intro it was uh you know i had fun playing star trek when i was a kid that's awesome yeah i was a little bit different uh as a kid i had um we had all the star wars action figures back yeah. in the day and so we would kind of make me and my friend would make our own like stories but it would be a space opera, but it had nothing to do with Star Wars. But I based my whole crew after like a Star Trek crew. Oh, yeah, like I had that's like awesome. a, I had a bridge that was like Star Trek, and in my mind, it was everything was just like just like Star Trek. It the was most just, perfect thing ever: Star Wars being Star Trek. That, yeah, that would be I really cool. Like, he's absconded with Star Wars to turn it into Star Trek. Well, because you should totally do a Star Wars story. That's that's like a bridge, like a bridge crew, but like make it like Star Trek, but with Star Wars type characters. That would be really cool to do. Um, like a totally off the wall spinoff has nothing to do with any of the movies. But a Star Trek style Star Wars movie. Well, there was there was at the time too as a kid there was the um, oh god what are they called the the action not the act they're like the dolls but the action figures they had the star um, they, the Star Trek ones they had Kirk and Spock I had Kirk and Spock. Look like the size of Barbie dolls. Yeah, yeah, the big um, ones. Yeah. What are they called, guy? What are those? Those are like they did the, the superheroes as well. They had like um, like the GI Joe's the GI Joe scale. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. But you know what I'm talking they were about? Eleven inch dolls instead of the instead six of inch. the little six inch action figures. Right. And there was even a bridge. They had a whole bridge, but it was like so. Are corn. you talking about the Amigo? Yeah, Amigo. Thank you. Yeah, yeah the Amigo. Yeah. Yeah. I had I had I just really had Kirk and Spock, but I remember the bridge and I wanted it. But it, looking back at it. Cause I, I've looked it up since like it's so ago. bad looking. It's terrible. It looks awful. Oh, it's it's ter- horrible. It yeah. like folds out. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 totally dumb. And uh, somebody stole my Kirk and Spock act, like figures. I don't know where they went. Oh, no. I, I used to play with them all the time, and then one day they just disappeared. On the playground at a bully steal them? No, I was at my <laughs> grandmother's house. Maybe my grandmother stole Your them. Grandma, she's like, these things aren't cute. These are worth. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she did. <laughs> Grandma stole my Kirk and Spock dolls. Yeah. Or maybe her Barbies were feeling lonely. Um, they needed to get a little logical. 
Ooh. <laughs> um, guy, did you have any uh, like try to play Star Trek or anything similar to that as a young kid? Well, um, besides your Cheerio story, we know that one. Yeah, no, actually, uh, I used to. I took. I had the Franz Joseph technical manual when I was a kid, mm-hmm. and in uh, fourth grade, my best friend Mike and I, we would trace all of the the phasers and the communicators out of the out of the book, and then cut them out of cardboard. Such a guy thing to do. I know, and then we would make them all. You know, we'd 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 layer them and everything like that, and. Ultimately, that got us like beat up by the bullies. But <laughs> before that happened, during the crafting, it was awesome. During the crafting phase or after the crafting phase? After the crafting, phase. when they were running out of the playgrounds <laughs> with their phasers, <laughs> their glue and paper phasers. So awesome! Yeah, that's but, awesome. But I had found the like the baseball shirts that they were selling at the time. They had like blue sleeves and they were white shirts, and then there was red sleeves and white shirts. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they were, like, weird enough. And I was like, I convinced my mom to buy, like, two or three of them. <laughs> did and you so red she shirts? did. And we would go around in these, you know, pretend like we were, had different yeah, different uniforms. sciences and, you know, and stuff like that. It was kind of fun. Yeah, we just wore um, the clothes when we were making the videos. We looked terrible. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. And then, we, you know, we'd stick little logos. We'd, tape, we'd make them out of uh, masking tape. We'd right. take the, the Delta Shield right. out of the masking tape and stick it on there. And they would stay on for, like, you know, an hour. Yeah. Um, I do remember us also recording. We were like we took the the Star Trek one novel, and we re-recorded all of the captain's logs out of it. But wow. we changed the names to our ships. Wow, whatever our ship was, I can't remember what our ship was. And we recorded on our tape deck, so we could play it back later. That's it awesome. was really fun. that's awesome. That's really cool. we did all kinds <laughs> of weird stuff. But I did have there was one time there was six inch. Star Trek characters too. You know, you were yes, talking about yes, that. yes, yes. There was, and and I had. I mean, I mean, this is in the this, uh, this motion picture. It was it was from Star Trek Two. So they really? were monster runes. Huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. We, we, remember, um, Bob got Bob Yetto got us the. You got you the Kirk one. He got me the Con one. Yeah. No. No. Those, you, like, those like seven inch though. Yeah. No. Those are taller, but uh, there. I, well, I no, like GI Joe the little GI Joe I know, guys, not the big GI Joe. Yeah. The little G- I remember. Uh, I remember from motion picture they had the in the white and gray uniforms, but I don't remember from the Wrath of Khan series. So that's interesting. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I swear I've, I've still got a couple of them, so I'll show them to you at some point in time. That's awesome. I, I promise you, I'll find them. My Star Trek toys were were the next generation action figures, and uh, I remember begging my mom to take me to. I had gotten like Christmas money or something. I was like begging her to take me to Walmart so I could buy a tricorder. Mm. That tricorder nice. toy. I was like, I just want the tricorder. It's so cool. They, so those cool. were cool. It makes noises. Did it's it? Little, yeah. It was, That's cool. It was battery operated. Yeah. Um, oh, great. I, I yeah. So I, I had the Amigo figures. That's the only thing I had besides the Star Wars action figures, and uh, and they disappeared. So yeah, Grandma. Good good times. Um, let's see. I've got an email. Um, Gra- grandma's got Grandma's got them all still right now, and she's like, "Let's see what they're on eBay." Now. <laughs> Grandma <laughs> ran off with my amigo figures. <laughs> uh, that's a great song. They should they should uh, play that during Christmas time. So yeah, he's like, she's like she's like sitting there going, "Well, he doesn't remember this." She listens to the podcast. <laughs> Crap! Oh, oh damn it! No. I had to wait longer. <laughs> I should wait a little longer. <laughs> Well, uh, we actually got this email um, before we started asking people about the uh, the, the 100th episode. Uh, but this was for the Synthaholic Toys, which you know, just as a reminder for Season 3, which starts end of, end of March, beginning of April. Soon. Soon, yes. We're gonna, I'm, I'm going to be starting to record some of the intros and make it sound just a little bit different with the Synthaholic's guy voice sounding like the Borg instead of like my voice by itself modulated. So he wrote to us, hey guys, I just wanted to say thanks for uh, for all the entertainment you guys have provided. The podcast has helped cheer me up in the darkest, darkest of days. So thanks guys, I look forward to listening to many more years. Oh, that's nice. It's from Timothy. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, I really appreciate it. And then I know you emailed me again, Timothy, I didn't get back to you yet. Uh, you were asking if I uh, didn't get your email. We did. We just recorded two episodes in one day and I hadn't gotten the email at that point. So just the way podcast production works... That's why uh, we're kind of all over the place sometimes. Yeah, timelines don't always work out. Um, 
I do appreciate it's one thing I always and I mean uh, guy maybe you could uh, relate to this is that when you're creating any type of piece of work or art podcast just that you know that maybe that you affected somebody in a positive manner it's such a nice feeling you know it's like you you you, you don't know when you're doing it if it's gonna if anybody is gonna do anything for anybody. Yeah. You know, like everyone be like, ah, fuck those guys. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're not funny. They're full of themselves. Yeah, like, yeah. But no, like, no. But it's it's really awesome crazy. to hear. You know that we, you know we've helped cheer you somebody up if they had you know yeah. a r- rough time. That's hugely inspirational. Well, just like guys, uh, USS Tamberlin uh, web comic. I I was reading it and I was like, man, this is awesome. This is really cool. This is totally different. You know, because he was kind of fusing star trek with you know anime and the manga style and i was like oh this is great you know it's totally different and uh i just enjoyed the whole thing so obviously you impacted me guy and um obviously i didn't ever reach out to you until far along the line so that's all right you ended up you know the cookies were cool and the candy (laughs) so that that worked and here i am (laughs) Taped up, duct taped in the back of my van. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's I really can a scary van, like guys. A little bit. I got to go pee somewhere along the line, yeah. but you know, I'm, I'm okay for right now. I gave, the catheters are for. I gave it your bucket. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I. It's awesome that somebody could listen to our podcast and and f- you know, we positively give them maybe a little sunshine at the end of the day. Yeah, you know? I mean, at least a smile or two of the crazy things that we say. Yeah, I mean, we we try to be funny. I know some people think we're inappropriate, but we don't give a fuck, and we're just having fun. You know, that's having all fun. That's, that's, what we're, that's what we're here for. I mean, if, if we're not having fun, I don't think people are going to enjoy the same time. Well, that's the other thing. Is like it, it, the other side of it is I always say, if it's not fun, then why are you doing it? Yeah, you know, it's like, come on. If 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 the end of the day after the product's finished, if you don't go like, oh, that was pretty cool, you know, then like, why are you doing it? If it's just like, eh, who cares? So we like to do it. We're having fun. We have a couple of laughs at our own expense, at the show's expense. <laughs> but it's all done in love. Yeah, we don't. I mean, we're obviously if you hear us, we don't hate on anything or anybody. Not usually. No, not usually. That's another style. <laughs> not usually, at least. Not usually. <laughs> <laughs> Shades of gray. Well, there's a couple episodes. We just did threshold, so. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I gotta admit, I, I'm kind of glad I dodged the threshold. I, you you know. dodged the threshold? That was your game night, so lucky you. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know, absolutely. It, it you know, it's funny when we did watch it, there was like a there was a point in that episode that it wasn't too bad of an episode. Like two thirds the way through. It's not it's not awful. And then that last third, it's just like where everything just like crumbles to You're dust. Just like, what just is like, going oh. on? Yeah. So anyways. Uh but thank you very much. his name was Timothy, right? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much, Timothy. It's very nice of you for the saying that. Yeah. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll be using your voice in Synthaholics yes. uh, for season three. So that'll be you'll fantastic. be assimilated as a Borg. Yes, <laughs> just like everybody else, you'll be assimilated. Get ready, it's coming. Should we do another audio clip? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do another audio clip. This is Mark Duncan, proud father of David Duncan, the founder of Synthaholics podcast. In the summer of 1966, I just turned 10 years old. I began to notice commercials on television for a new science fiction space adventure series. It was called Star Trek. My mind was captivated by it from the beginning. It advertised itself as the first adult space adventure. And even though I was far from being an adult, a mature approach to a television show about space greatly appealed to me. I was also struck by the fact that the Enterprise looked far different than any other spaceship I'd ever seen. Gone were the tail fins and the flames propelling the vessel through space. The Enterprise was strange, wonderful, and exciting. The very first episode, The Man Trap, was fascinating. I was both freaked out and enthralled by the salt vampire. I've always been interested in science. In fact, I am a science teacher, and thus I was fascinated by phasers as opposed to lasers, photon torpedoes, warp speed, and the transporter. I was totally addicted to Star Trek from the beginning. Truly excellent art will stand the test of time. People will be admiring the paintings of Leonardo and the music of Mozart a thousand years from now. 
Star Trek, likewise, stands the test of time. Fifty years later, I remain captivated by the original uncut Trek episodes being broadcast on BBC America. I continue to be impressed by the fine acting and the timeless stories that explore the complexity of the human condition. I'll be a Star Trek fan until the day I die. The Lord has given me seven children. I'm proud to say that I've passed on the legacy of a love of Star Trek to at least a few of them. I have fond memories of watching the various incarnations of Star Trek with my young sons, especially my firstborn David, whose love of Star Trek is borne out in this creation of Synthaholics. Well, thank you so much, Dad, for, for sending that in and all the, all the wonderful, kind words. Yeah, I, you know, when he first started, I thought that he was going to actually give himself the mantle of founder of Synthaholics, <laughs> since he <laughs> basically is the, uh, you, you are the product. The progenitor. You are, you are the product the of. Progenitor, the progenitor. The creator. Of Mr. Duncan, so. <laughs> He's the creator. So I guess Jack you are the Breaker. co. You I'm are the David unit. <laughs> The young David unit. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, it's awesome. You know, it's cool, too, because to get somebody's perspective of when the original series first came out, I obviously am a little too young for that. So I, I didn't know when that came out. I mean, I, I was not an I, yeah. I saw the reruns when it came out. Yeah. Uh, so but to see somebody like this to watch the the the, the opening Who was there yeah the, the commercials and everything when they being first started. excited for it to come out it's just like just like bonnie moss yeah and be like what is this you know this is totally different you know like you said and it is you look at the enterprise like what a wacky looking ship because yeah, everything before that like flash gordon and stuff like that yeah. it was just like it was just like a rocket ship they look like fins, rocket and ships. It, was just, yep. it was just like so antiquated and it had like smoke coming out that always went up Right, yeah. right. <laughs> Lights and sparks and right. And don't get me wrong. Ridiculous. I loved, uh, I loved uh, like Flash Gordon and all that stuff. I used to read the comics, and then the obviously the eighties movie came out, which was you know a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, what? but yeah, uh, soundtrack done by Queen. Um, oh yes, <laughs> but um, Flash, he saved every one of us. Um, but yeah, but that must be was. <laughs> it must have been a fascinating time to like you know just be like wow this is so different like seeing it come out yeah, yeah. well hopefully Absolutely. you know for young kids you know kids that are growing up now when they when a Star Trek a real Star Trek Discovery preview comes out hopefully that'll you know inspire young kids you know seven eight nine ten to want to watch this I, I hope it does right. well in like It'll light the flame. Yeah, and uh, like we were, you know, uh, guy. We did a show recently, a Truck Noobs, where we had uh, Josiah from the Geekiverse, and he was on, and he was. We had him watch the Galileo Seven, and it was great because he got to see it. I mean, he's seen the JJ reboots, but he's never seen. He was totally fresh to like watching Star Trek episodes, like all the way through. Like he, he had seen probably bits and pieces here and there, but and he, he never gave it yeah. his attention. And he loved it. He was like, wow, this is great, you know, to see, like, the original cast and them in their glory. And he was like, they're so young and they're so vibrant and, like, the acting's good. And, you know, he took it with the caveats of, you know, the, the sets look a little corny and stuff like that, you know. But, sure. But, you know, he knew that it was in the time of its, you know, when it was. You and know? he totally agreed that, you know, it's totally timeless, just like my dad was saying, for, yeah. or for you know, it's going to stand the test of time. Yeah. Um, well, and that's, that's an interesting thing. My wife watched... Uh, original series stuff, and she really hadn't watched. I mean, you know, like 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 you were saying earlier, she'd seen some bits and pieces, but she had seen the originals, and you know, of course, she saw the remastered. Uh, you know, I, I had her sit down and watch some of the remastered ones. She's like, "Oh, it's so much better with the remastered because the original ones were so grainy and yeah, and everything like that. And when they remastered them, they were rich and vibrant, and the colors are bright. And then they changed out." Probably the weakest part was the special effects. Yes, the external, and so they the swapped shots, them out. Yeah. And now they, I mean, even I mean, even now, I, I I'm still amazed at just how much the original series can hold up. Mm-hmm. You can't watch Lost in Space. No, I mean, no. <laughs> I mean, you we can were watch episodes of Chips the other day and going, oh boy, yeah, you know. I mean, Knight Rider is a mess. Oh. And I remember loving Knight Rider when it first came out. Absolutely. You know, it's just like you know. It's amazing how little things do hold up. They don't, but Star Trek really does. Yeah, they... and even the animated series, which I know we've had like <laughs> our, our, dis- <laughs> our disagreements on. But the, I mean, the the animated series 
the animation's really, really, really weak because it's filmation and they were running so fast. But the truth of the matter is the stories are still really solid in a lot of those. Oh, we got to have Guy on next time we do an animated series. Oh, we, yeah. we haven't done one with Guy yet. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I'm, I'm the, with a degree in animation. <laughs> I know. And we're all dunces. <laughs> Not only that, I, I was I, I worked on the on the uh, Farragut episodes where they yeah. duplicated that. Yeah, check check that out, guys. If you if you're interested in yeah. the animated series and haven't seen the Farragut animated one, check it out. Our own G.S. Davis. He's got yeah. his hands on many different projects. I, I really do. I, I, you'd think somebody would be like hitting my hand, going, "Get out Stop. of here! Don't touch that!" We just keep inviting you, you back, here? though. You're just so awesome. Who are you? Why are you here? You're in this room with me. <laughs> I hear that women all at a time. <laughs> um, and I'm like, sorry, I don't know. Transporter malfunction. Yeah. <laughs> My excuse for everything. No, but it, and like your like your father said, it's the the timelessness of it, and it's yeah. you know like you said, like Mozart and uh, you know Michelangelo paintings and stuff like. I do believe that something about Star Trek has that timeless quality to it. And if you give it the half minute, you know, to watch it and, and get into it, you know, for a few minutes, you'll understand what it's about. And that Galileo 7 is now in the museum. I mean, it'll probably stay there for a good long time. They just restored the uh, Enterprise from the the original, the original Star Trek Enterprise yeah. for the Smithsonian. They actually sent yeah. bits and pieces of it to uh, one of the colleges up here in Buffalo to have them help restore it. Oh, yep, that's yep. awesome. Yeah, so I mean, like it's you know, Buffalo, we're doing our part for Star Trek at least a little bit. <laughs> yep, especially yeah. with well, this podcast with the Galileo. The Galileo had that long road, yeah, ending up on the Intrepid Museum. Yeah, and it's just it's great that you know these things are being preserved and like you know kept around. I know I know everything with Star Trek Discovery will be probably CGI, but it would be wonderful if they made actual models of this stuff. I just as like backups or I, something. I just love that the Galileo was like in like somebody's front lawn, <laughs> like a like a like a busted up car on like <laughs> cinder blocks that it was doing the same thing. Uh, except it was a it was a shuttlecraft from from Star Trek. The so. thing is, if it was in the South, you know, you might not bet an eye at it. There's um, <laughs> oh, that's the Galileo. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> when I lived in Jackson, Mississippi, uh, there was a house a couple, uh, you know, a couple uh, houses from ours, and they had like all these cars all the time, like in various states of repair in their front yard, and you could see into their backyard even from their front a little bit. These oh, cars everywhere. I, apparently these were, were meth dealers, and wow. someone broke into my car and stole my CD player out of my car to sell it to them to get meth. Oh. But uh, it was funny they because they, uh, we heard you know we found out they got busted for meth and all the cars disappeared. But um, <laughs> I, I have a similar story uh, just to throw out there is I used to live down in in the bu- city of Buffalo in Allentown, which is sort of like the this is when I, I first got married and we were in like the, it's sort of the, the hip area of the city to hang out, and we had an apartment there and. And the, how you got to our apartment to, to park, there was a back alleyway. It was like literally cobblestone brick you drive down oh, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And uh, I would park and I kept – it's the weirdest thing is I, where I park, I would park and I would go to my apartment and I wouldn't really pay attention. The one day I was sitting there in my car for some reason and I was looking at the apartment in front of me and there was something there that looked familiar but I couldn't quite place what it was. And I, and I looked at it and I didn't really think about it and I drove away. Next day, I drove the. I mean, I, when I was in my car looking at the same thing, it was a square, and I finally looked at it really closely. It was Han Solo frozen in carbonite, a full size. I don't know replica, <laughs> like tucked underneath somebody's stairs. That's bizarre. It was like some <laughs> like like a back stairwell coming down, yeah. and it was just like someone just shoved it back there. And I was going to, like, you know, like, I was like, I got to steal that. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like, why is it sitting there? You know? And I, and I, I, I never actually stole it, but I, I just was like, I can't believe I've been staring at this for like probably a three, four weeks and I hadn't noticed. Like, just make it your front door. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, that's really cool. But yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, Dad, for, for sitting there. That's awesome. Yeah. Very nice. That was cool. And thank you for your son. He's a pretty, pretty great guy. Seven kids is a big task. I don't know how you do that, but that's to your credit. <laughs> uh, uh, should we do a, uh, another message? Yeah, let's do another one. I have a message from uh, the Geekiverse, uh, Peter Herr, Pete Herr from um, the Grumpy Geek. 
the grumpy geek. He's very grumpy. And he wrote to us, and he says, I grew up with the crew of the Enterprise on their first run of syndication in the early 1970s. As a kid, I was certain that I would be able to apply for Starfleet. I'm a, a totally bitter that I'm now 52, and Starship Captain is not a job listed on my LinkedIn page. If President Trump starts building Starfleet tomorrow, by the time it's done, I'll have, I'll have uh, reached the Federation's mandatory retirement age. Not cool. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's great. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's one of the first things me, me and Pete talked about. I met him at the, the Buffalo Comic Con uh, back in September of uh, last year. And, um, you know, uh, I was uh, – Robbie, uh, who was on the show before, introduced me to, to Josiah, and I was talking to them. And they were like, oh, well, Pete, he's, he's our Star Trek guy. So I sat down and talked with him for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, I'm just disappointed that this is, this is the – I wish I was, you know, a Starfleet, Starfleet captain. He he uh, definitely wants to be that. I, I want to be that too. I'm I'm sad that it's not a job description that's actually available. Yeah, no doubt. I wanted. I would have tried yeah. way harder in school if that was true. <laughs> I I literally wanted to be Kirk growing up. I that's who I wanted to be. I I modeled so much of myself after Kirk uh, as at a young age. But then I realized I probably wasn't going to be as awesome as Kirk. So I had to dial it back a little bit. So you know, because it works great in TV, but yeah, not so great in real <laughs> life. So. You know, you can't just kiss all the girls. But Kirk definitely you did. You can't. I mean, you can, but uh, it doesn't it doesn't work out for it you. Work out. You say it's a transporter malfunction. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you start looking a little rapey, and people don't like that. No, it goes uh, over badly. Yeah, it's it, it's and that's another thing is like you know we all kind of thought you know with you know movies like two thousand one and stuff like that by this point we'd be out in space or there'd be something happening. Yeah, you know, we all thought we were in that trajectory where we were going to be like. Well, I guess just after the Apollo program, just general public lost interest, and when public lost interest in space, it's just kind of like. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, I don't know why the public's got interested in it for it to need to be a thing. Well, because I think the moon was like such a high water mark, and then we're just like, okay, we're just going to do orbits around the planet, and it's like, well, okay, but didn't we do that already? Like, didn't we? You know, <laughs> John, didn't John Glenn do that? I mean, like, why do we need to do more of that? I mean. I'm not diminishing everything that NASA's done and every other space agency's done, but it's like we thought we'd have moon bases by now, you know, and discovering the monolith on the moon. I mean, that's... Oh, come on, we need, we need that monolith, like, ASAP. You know. <laughs> Let's get going. <laughs> Where's our monolith? <laughs> well, I mean, like, I think... Uh, but, I mean, like, I think, I think the reason why we don't have moon bases is because the interest dropped off. And then the Apollo stopped, and then now there's no reason to... I don't know Did if that was a. I don't, I don't know, know if that was a public disinterest. I think that was more of a. Uh, we we realized that we were not going like the Russians weren't going to go any further than what we yeah, were I think, doing. I think Aaron's right. I think that what ended up happening was we didn't have impetus. Yeah, yeah. Without without uh, the the idea that the, if the Russians were building a base up there, we'd have a base up there now. You know, if that yeah, if, yeah. It was, if that was their plan plan. But uh, that's I'm, silly. That oh, we're only going to do it because someone else is doing it. We should be the first. We, we shouldn't be. The wait to someone else tries it, and then, oh, we've got to beat them. Right. I'm like, let's just let's just pioneer. Let's 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 not like sit back and wait for other people to pioneer, then beat them to it. Let's just yeah. pioneer on our own, please. I know it would be nice. It, and you know, you look back at at all, even like you know, earlier discoveries. And, you know, when they discovered the you know Americas, the you know, the Europeans came to America. You know, that was all financed by the governments. You know, it was Spain. You know, throwing Columbus money his way to you know finance his boats and every, every other you know person that went out there, Magellan and all those other explorers, they were financed by the government. So it wasn't you know obviously it was I love the Animaniacs Magellan song, <laughs> but I mean let's face it, it probably was a little bit cheaper than you know trying to do a moonshot. So sure, um, which I did recently just watch. I don't know. You don't. I mean, I think relatively speaking, I think that uh, you Magellan's think? Magellan's explanation. If you were to Adjust it for nineteen sixty nine dollars. <laughs> I think you might find that they were pretty equivalent in cost. It's possible. I don't. Yeah. I'm not a I mean, they had to be you know financed by the kings and queens of their era. Oh, it was a lot of money. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Yeah. Um. I uh. I recently watched that uh, Hidden Figures. You guys get catch that at all? Oh yeah. That was that's oh, one of my favorites now. I so, decided that's one of my favorite movies. I such a movie. wonderful movie, and and to see uh, there's, I mean, there it's obviously it has to do with you know racism, 
at the time of the 1960s of the uh, you know the original moonshot and uh, that moonshot well it, it deals with moonshot but also our, you know sending men up in the in, up in it was Harvard. it was the mercury yeah right it was mostly based around mercury but what a yeah. great what a great story and it's all true obviously i mean they obviously hollywood hollywoodized it you know, to make it yeah, they Hollywoodized it, it a little, but it wasn't that Hollywood. No, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't like it wasn't like silly, how you know Hollywood style. But it, I mean, like they show the pictures of it, and my wife was like, "Oh, so they're not as attractive as those ladies." And it's like, well, yeah. of course, you know. And I'm sure the head of NASA wasn't Kevin Costner looking either. So, well, you know, I mean, like, like just just like Game of Thrones in the books, he describes all the characters, and all the characters. Almost all the characters in Game of Thrones are described like they're really, really ugly. Yeah, yeah and even even like people. even like Brienne of Tarth, who's like one of the ugliest people in the books. Like you know, Gwendolyn Christie's not a bad looking lady. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> well, that's one, of the, that's one of the things that I mean, you know. And of course, with hidden figures, we were really talking about some of the most amazing things, which were the computers, humans, which were the people, yeah. who did math, yeah. And they did. They were just these phenomenal geniuses who could just look at these problems and just know the answer. And it was amazing, yeah. you know? So it, they were amazing people. What's more amazing is that there there were people out there, and I, I believe there still are, obviously, but there are people out there that could just do math in their head to that extent and figure out through these problems without using really much of a, uh, they didn't even have like they had probably simple calculators, but nothing like we have today. Yeah, nothing like a scientific graphing calculator with like uh, trigonometry built into it. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, I mean they, they didn't even have simple calculators back then. They literally did all of this by hand. Yeah, abacus. They they had uh, they had slide rules. Yeah, but I mean, I mean one of my favorite scenes is in Apollo uh, Apollo thirteen with with where they're you know they're they're coming back and you see. Tom Tom Hanks up there writing all of the math on on the piece of paper, and he's like, "I'm getting punchy. You got to check me." And it cuts back to NASA, and they're hauling out the slide rules, and all of them are writing out the math, yeah. and they're checking him, you know. And that's that's the way it was back then. Yeah, but know? it's it's incredible that that's a thing. And like, I I wonder if like our society has lost something, you know, that we are everything so accessible. Maybe um, I know that you know one of that's one of my my dad's favorite. Uh, quotes that he likes to to say is you know he when the first computers came out he's like ah, i can add two and two faster than me so what i mean how's that going to change the world no nah. so i mean you know it, yeah that's true but you know the the thing about the advances in in society in, in my opinion is that it, it frees us up to do more oh absolutely yeah, you we know. don't we don't have to go out and churn butter. We can just you know go pick it up at a store now. I mean, imagine right. how difficult right. it is to churn butter. I don't even want to think about it. Right. You know. Well, or, or it makes I me mean, exhausted thinking about things. it. When I mean, I, every time I get an update for Manga Studio, the program that I use for for making comics, it cuts. I just found a, a thing that Manga Studio does that cuts fifteen minutes out of creating an episode of Tamerlan. I mean, that's. That's a big deal. Yeah. Every one of those means that I can do a little bit more. Right, right. You know? Yeah, no, it's great. And, I mean, yeah, I do agree that, obviously. Teach, techn- teach Aaron your tricks. He's got Manga Studio now. I know. I do. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll, we'll be sitting and talking, I guess. I can tell already. We'll be just sitting and chatting about this. All day long. <laughs> Get ready. Yeah. But it, it was more of the thing that it was um, – it, and I'm not disagreeing with anything you said there, guys. It's just that – uh, sure. I, I do wonder if we've lost something. It's like I, that, you know, there's people that would walk around, they would have quotes uh, in their heads from their favorite literature or their favorite, you know, poems or something to that nature. And now I don't know if people do, do that anymore. We quote Monty Python now. I know. <laughs> it took me into well, a newt. Yeah. And, and maybe I got better. And maybe it's it's a matter of, um, you know, it's and, and you think about what are, what are the quotes? I mean. What quotes would you be thinking about? You know, it's and maybe it's Monty Python's what we're thinking about. Well, you know, I mean, you think about like, you know, Shakespeare or things to that nature or, you know, Lord Byron or something to that nature. But I mean, it's like it, it, it doesn't matter. It's just that, you know, like there was a time I mean, there was a time when I would, you know, memorize quotes or poems of some nature. And I've seemed to evolve getting kind of smooshed out of my head. 
I mean, I can I can quote Hamlet, but that's about it. In this scene, it yeah. doth befall that I, once snapped by name, do present the wall, and such walls have you think would have it a cranny hole or chink through which lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did often sometimes whisper. I played the wall in, in the Shakespeare <laughs> play. Nice, nice. I pulled that out from college, guys. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. But anyways, yeah, I mean, very nice, Dave, but I mean, that's that's the things I wonder about the human condition, but... Whatever. We're getting off topic very far. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, we're getting... We, we, <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's sort of off topic, but it is kind of on the same sort of concept, mm-hmm. you know? We want Starfleet. We want it now. Thank you, Pete, for um, for, for sitting that in. And maybe maybe if Trump initiates it, he won't have a uh, you know minimum age for retirement. Yeah. So, you know, you can always hope or just lie. Um, I'm reading a book called... Uh, old man's war right now it's a science fiction novel where uh, when you're seven years old you apply for the colonial defense and they basically take you up to their ship and they uh they they basically revitalize you to a young person yeah and and you go to fight in their wars yes so it's a great piece well that's that's the payment yeah that's the payment for for revitalizing you can die yeah or we'll revitalize you and then you become a, a a soldier and then once your time is served your time is served. Yeah, I love Old Man's War. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting story. I mean, uh, that they would actually, you know, that somebody came up with that instead of going to retirement, you go to war. You know, so giggity. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little giggities in there too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, you want to go put the next one? It's, yeah. it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's a good story. All right, let's uh, do our next one. I have a multiple choice question to ask the audience today. Um, a hundred. Why is it significant to the Synthaholics duo? A. Is it the number of times that Dave has fantasized about Jin and Cassian? B. Is it the amount of dick jokes Aaron works on to every episode? Or C. Is it the upcoming 100th episode for the Synthaholics? I know it's a shocker, but if you guess C, you guess correct. What's up, everybody? This is Josiah Leroy from the Geekiverse, and I'm wishing Dave and Aaron another amazing 100 episodes after the first awesome 100 that they've had. Thanks for always uh, being a part of it with us, and we we really appreciate what you guys do. So, from our family to yours, live long and prosper. Thank you so much, Josiah, for sending that in. Uh, I love multiple choice. It makes things so much simpler. I love dick jokes. (laughs) (laughs) And Guy loves fantasizing about uh, Cassian and (laughs) Jen. <laughs> you know, I think he was. I think he was headed for you on that one. But that's yeah, right. I know. But I, I said something. Aaron said that something. I needed. I, I needed to include right. you, so I just. Gave, I gave you mine. Right, and Josiah from the Geekiverse. If uh, I'm sure, if you've listened to us enough, that you know that Josiah has been on what three episodes now? Uh, uh, yeah, three. Yeah. yeah, two two of the uh, Star Wars uh, episode two. I mean episode two and episode three, and uh, and Trek noobs. He Trek, was, he was Trek our Trek noobs. noob. Trek noobs, and then we also have done a couple episodes of. Uh, we haven't quite officially named it, but we're like doing a little. We're doing a collaboration podcast that'll be shared throughout several different podcasts. So we'll keep you posted when that's right, right. Uh, available. But uh, yeah, so thank you, Josiah. Yeah, hundred hundred episodes. Obviously, uh, I mean when we started this. I don't think we don't, we didn't like plan. I mean anything. We, no, we were, we pretty much go week to week, and it's like really are we get a hundred now. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's, it, it, it literally snuck up on us because we don't. Um, we plan a little bit. I mean, like the, we plan out the month, some, kind of. Sometimes we have a whole month planned ahead of time. Like this month, we sort of have it sort of figured yeah, out. Yeah, but a lot of times you pretty much go by the seat of our pants. Yeah, it's it's yeah, amazing. Like, what do you want to do this week? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's the day before. What do you want to do? Hey, Dave, what's that episode where uh, you know? And I'll describe it. And he goes, "Oh, you're talking about that one. Okay, yeah, let's do that one." Uh, and then I think that's part of the problem why you don't always hear guy because like Aaron and I are still trying to figure out what's happening like the day before we record, and then it's like, "Hey, guy, can you do this?" It's like, "Oh." Uh, it's just, it's just really I, bad I with I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, guy. We're so, I'm washing my so cat. uncoordinated. I'm washing my cat. <laughs> but, you know, the funny thing is, too, is that uh, our schedules have been jumped around in the last couple years here. Well, so. uh, uh, coming up in February, Year of Hell, um, it'll be the anniversary of Year of Hell. We're having Pete Hur, who uh, you just yeah, read Grumpy a, Geek, we, we, we we're had having him there. back to talk about Year of Hell. But, yeah, but we uh, uh, our schedules have changed quite a bit, so it's hard to get Guy on the same time as we yeah. used to. So yeah. And yeah. Guy is obviously in a different time zone, so... 
it's all messed up. Yeah, my availability is next to nil with the working from 6 p.m. to 2.30 a.m. Monday through Friday, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't don't bother him. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I love getting messages. I, I'm bored at work sometimes. <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, thanks, Josiah. Josiah has been great. And that was really nice. And he's, he's one of these guys that is, uh, you know, a passionate about uh, all sorts of geek, you know, he's into video games. He's into Star uh, Wars, Star Wars, and yep. movies. And we're, we're we're molding him into a Star Trek fan slowly. <laughs> slowly, we're converting <clears throat> him. You know, we're insidious that way. Darth Sidious that way. Yeah, Darth Sidious. Um, but yeah, uh, oh, that's yeah he's, we're Darth he's Sidious yeah, that way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was Darth Sidious that way, um, but yeah, he's he's uh, the the head of the C- uh, CEO of the Geekiverse, and uh, we've been working with them a lot since uh, Buffalo Comic Con. I appeared on two of their videos they put out, um, so check out their YouTube channel. We'll have a link to that in the description, I'm sure. Yeah, and uh, check out their videos. I was on two of them: one talking to the Grumpy Geek about Star Trek Discovery, and another one talking about uh, just since Trump thinks big, what do we th- want from what we want? And of course, I wanted the Enterprise. Sure, why not? Why not? <clears throat> yeah, why wouldn't you? Everybody wants the Enterprise. I, if that was true, we'd have one. <laughs> I wish everyone wanted the Enterprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess you're right. Yeah. Got to invent those warp fields. Um, cool. So, uh, should we do a email? Uh, yes. We have an email from Don Jackson. How I Met Lieutenant Uhura. Ooh, this is sounds this, erotic. Yeah, this is uh, going to be an erotic fan novel. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, prepare to be disappointed. Oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, no. In 2015, I got a table at the Rochester Comic Con where actress Michelle Nichols was one of the featured guests. Artist Alley was positioned on the way there, so when she was sitting, I knew I'd be able to see her from where I sold, and, sold my prints and drew caricatures. I admit I was too shy to actually talk to her. I was pretty starstruck. As a child, I was like everyone in grammar school, a faithful watcher of Star Trek. Man, that's, you had an awesome grammar school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a tremendous crush on Lieutenant Uhura with her eloquent manner and femininity and very short red dress. I, I, I'm adding the very short red dress part because I'm definitely a fan of uh, the Uhura short red dress. Short red dresses. Gotcha. <clears throat> yes. Um, sorry. I'm, I'm but- butchering your email. I'm sorry. I'll never forget the interracial kiss between her and Captain Kirk. Though at a young age, I didn't realize the magnitude of the scene on television in its day. I was thunderstruck by my puppy love for her. On the second day of the con, I was arriving early with many other vendors, and I was lugging an awkward heavy load of portfolios, prints, and art supplies. Several of us, several of us rushed to the elevator when I noticed a white-haired lady being escorted by in a wheelchair. Her escort spun around her to face the doorway. And as I was next in line to get on the elevator, the, at instant I felt a great rush. In my, it was my African goddess, my Enterprise crush. I was caught in that rear field air, where time slows down and the mind records every sense on ten. I, I locked eyes with Lieutenant Uhura. At that moment, she recognized that I was bearing a heavy load, and seeing that there was not enough space in the elevator, she gave me a look and a hand gesture as if to say, I'm sorry, maybe you can squeeze in. At the elevator doors began to close, I was completely uh, cheeseballed, and I said, Beam her up, Scotty. That's what I was thinking. I actually had a smile on my face, and I made her smile, too. Captain's Log, 2015 Rochester Con. Met a beautiful human being, someone who made a great contribution to civil rights for a role in Star Trek. Made her smile. Mission complete. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, so uh, Don Jackson. It's a great story. Yeah, that's a great story. Uh, Don Jackson. Uh, I'm so sorry I messed it up. <laughs> yeah, come on. Uh, he's a uh, wonderful artist, and he uh, I've I met him obviously a lot of the Buffalo Comic Cons, and we're uh, part of the uh, Visions Art Group here in Buffalo for comic book artists. I sat right next to him at the Buffalo Comic Con yeah. 2015. Yeah, 2015 we uh, we sat together. He, he's uh, he's always working on art. He's doing um, uh, he's doing uh, his own comic book right now. I'm not. I'm blanking on the title. I don't know if he told me yet. Uh, he's done. He's done quite a. He's quite a bit of work, and I've done some. Uh, we were part of a gallery showing at one point too, as well. And his artwork is just stellar, unbelievable. He's got a beautiful style. It's totally unique. It's not like anybody else's. It's it's a it's 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 a little bit of everything. It's a harken back to uh, an older uh, comic book style, but then also he kind of brings in his own 
flair. So it's it's yeah. It's I, follow, I follow him on Facebook, and he's got some beautiful art that he posts every now and then. And he actually he recognized me because um, he met we met at the 2015 Buffalo Comic Con. Sure. He recognized me at the 2016. He waved me down, and he actually just gave me a print that he drew of like uh, three captains. It was like Kirk, I think, and Picard, and I think the the other Kirk. Okay, so, um, cool. So it was really cool uh, getting to see this. Uh, he, and he drew it, and he's like, he just gave it to me for free, and just like, oh, thank you wow. for all that you do. I was really, really appreciate it. Thank no, you so much, Don. It's awesome. And he did. Um, he gave me. Uh, he gave me a print actually of Aquaman, one, one of my favorite uh, characters. So that's something he did himself. So it's it's really nice of him. And uh, yeah, he does. He teaches. He uh, he teaches a class. I know he does figure drawing classes and a whole bunch of other stuff. And he's, he's a wonderful person. So very very nice. And thank you so much for that email. That's wonderful that you got a chance to meet Yahura and or Nichelle Nichols. Oh, that's so awesome that she was at the Rochester Comic Con. That's that's really awesome. And then you got to lock eyes with her, and she was like, "Oh, I wish you could squeeze in. I, I see you're carrying a lot of stuff. You know, that's that's really nice of her. And you know, he's uh." He's got a couple of Facebook places you can follow him at. Uh, his Facebook dot com slash Donald Jackson Art Music, all one word because it's you know it's URL and uh, Facebook dot com slash Rogue Planet Rock. Yeah, and we'll cool. post we'll post those on there our uh, show, show notes. notes as well for everybody. So um, yeah, yeah, so everyone can see what he's got. But yeah, so uh, very cool. And just to meet a living legend, I mean, I, and besides, I don't know if I've met anybody. I know. Guy, you've met a ton of people, haven't you? But you are yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I've just met everybody. I'm awesome. Well, no, I, you do get around. That's what I've heard. <laughs> I get around. <laughs> get around, round, round. I get around. I get around. No, sorry. Nichelle's such a wonderful person. She's she is the the one person that I've met really closely because it in a really. I guess it would have been ninety one or no, I mean two thousand one. 2002 probably 2002 she was here in denver at mile high con and i was on her security detail because i worked for the convention at the time did you wear a red shirt yeah i wore a red <laughs> shirt um just for her <laughs> i mean my job was just to stay near her but the convention is such a quiet laid-back convention mm-hmm. that nobody messed with her you know it was just like nobody and you know so she just wandered around the dealer's room and everything like that and i just stayed with her the entire time and we just tootled around and it was great and then at the very end of the weekend um i you know i had uh i'd been with her the whole time and i was taking her back to her room and she was like, well, thank you for doing that and staying with me the entire time. I'm like, really, it wasn't that hard because the convention's really quiet and has like 300 people. And then she kissed me on the cheek. It was very sweet. What? Yeah, totally. You I'm just, actually not even joking. You just made everyone uh, listening John, jealous. I, <laughs> gave me a boner. Poor, John, poor, but, poor, uh, poor Don. You're stealing his African goddess. Oh, my God. You got a kiss from Yahura. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, my cheek. I'm right here. Cheek. I haven't washed it since. Did you get a fan dance? <laughs> no, be, that would be nice. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my Uhura story. She's such a sweet person. I mean, every time I hear anything about her, she's such a. I mean, I mean, like it's like she never has a bad day. You know what I mean? She she's just perpetually upbeat and she's very she's subdued. I mean, she's not she's not like gregarious or anything like that. But she she is like really sweet all the time that's wonderful and she's such a good person wow that's awesome yeah i mean i i haven't really met um too many people i mean other than and we, we talked to walter Koenig. walter Koenig for briefly but i mean it wasn't really like we didn't you know it, we, we kind of had to stay on topic about uh, about captain, captain pike. pike because that's what we were talking about we were being monitored by Captain Pike. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I never really had a chance to talk to anybody else besides that. So it's, uh, it's my own fault. You know, I never really put myself out there. I remember we had, um, uh, we used to have cons that came here, Star Trek cons into Buffalo area back in the nineties. So uh, Will Wheaton came and, um, uh, uh, Troy, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Marina Sertes. Thank you. Marina Sertes. She, uh, they both came and I saw them both speak, but I didn't go out and meet them. I was too shy. I would kind of felt like, oh, they don't want to talk to me. 
<laughs> I, I was. I was whatever. I was 17 years old, 18 years old. I was like, oh, they don't want to talk to me. I really hope that uh, Nickel City Con's got William Shatner. I hope they get a couple other Star Trek actors crossing my fingers, hoping, hoping, hoping. Mm-hmm. I'd love you to know, see some more Star you guys, Trek people. Uh, you should go in there and uh, and see if you can't get interviews with them. I mean, we, we do with Geek Tank. I I reached out to uh, Shatner... Uh, his uh, his people I have not heard back from yet. So <laughs> no, well, no. I mean, uh, I talk to the media teams at the conventions. Yeah, that's a good idea. See if I can get. Yeah, and see see if the because uh, I don't know about you guys. I mean, obviously, <laughs> but a couple of the Denver cons here will um, they they've they've got a room set aside for interviews and stuff like that, and they'll let media teams in. That's cool. See if so they work that, that that's. Out. I mean, short of the, I've met Nichelle Nichols and I've met Mari Ijima, who is who is Min May from uh, Robotech. Awesome. Uh, but uh, short of the, short of stories like that. But that's that's from working cons. I've worked a lot of cons. I've been working cons since the '90s. So, but um, short of that, most of the time, the people I've met have been because we've gone in as geek tank. You know, that's awesome. That's great. That's cool. So you guys, you guys could totally. Do the med or the, the media creds? The only problem is we don't really get very big guests here in Buffalo. William Shatner is probably the biggest guest at a con here for a while. Locally, that I for a I've while. Heard of. It's been a while. Oh sure, yeah. But you know, I mean, Rochester's I, an hour out, so I mean, I guess we could have gone to Rochester, but I mean, we got to pay it's, more it's, attention. It's one of those, it's one of those things from my point of view. I've never been to New York ever in my life, so obviously Manhattan's just down the street from you guys in my world. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I can't. I can't even like an comprehend all, it. It's like an all day drive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm out here in Denver, where you know the next closest city is like, you know, two hours away, three hours away, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's that's it's it's an hour to Colorado Springs, and it's another. You know, however long anything. So, so, so New, far, New York far. is like eight Colorado Springs away from us, uh, for your for your perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a quick uh, a quick uh, you know flight over to New York, you can get there pretty quickly you know, for pretty cheap prices too. You know. Yeah. But, yeah. but then the hotels are just like you yeah. Know, the, like the hotels are more different than story. my rent. Yeah, the hotels are a different story. But um, yeah, so uh, awesome. So, there. so if there are any synthaholics listeners that live in the you know Manhattan area but, that don't mind a sleepover <laughs> party in the night, <laughs> yeah, don't mind our revelries. Give us a ring. <laughs> yeah. um, awesome. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, that yeah. was a great, great story. I love, I love that story that you got a chance to lock eyes, lock eyes, eye locking. I love uh, locking eyes. Very good. And then uh, I think we get one last uh, yeah, audio clip. Yeah, I want to do another audio clip. Okay. Hi, my name is Joshua Duncan, and I would like to share with you a Star Trek thought. Ever notice in the original series episode, Journey to Babel, where Kirk is fighting the Andorian assassin, he does this move where he kicks himself off the wall and hits the Andorian in the face with his ass. I had to rewind this about six or seven times before I was finally able to believe what my eyes were telling me. But it's there. So if you haven't noticed this before, <laughs> go treat yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Josh, for sending in that amazing piece of enlightenment. Yeah. Uh, he had to watch it six or seven times. I'm it's, like, it's going, the, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know <laughs> it's awesome. you've heard of the Picard maneuver and the Riker maneuver. This is the flying butt pliers. <laughs> flying yes. butt plier maneuver from, from Kirk. It's uh, the ladies love it. They can't get enough. <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, I, this I, is how we flirt to the Andorian. Actually, yeah. Journey to Babel is a uh, wonderful episode. It's, just, it's so many layers down to it, and that but that technically is technically he was an Orion. Oh yeah, yeah, right. He technically, yeah, technically he was. Yes, although he looks actually like, he was an Orion. He was just a disguise. This an guy is an Andorian. That's the one they do that a lot in Star Trek. Well, it's so, you can just. You know, change the way you look, and everyone just accepts Except. that's what you are. You know, uh, when so Miles dumb. O'Brien gets turned to a Klingon, <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's like the ugliest Klingon ever. Well, hell, he had a whole <laughs> yeah. I mean, he had a whole uh, episode where they uh, all infiltrate the Klingon Empire yeah. in uh, DS Nine. Cisco so. looked like a badass Klingon, but yeah. O'Brien was like probably the worst Klingon I've ever. He was seen. the worst looking <laughs> Klingon I've ever seen. It's like a Scottish Klingon, like it's so weird. This or Irish Klingon, Irish, it's just Irish so weird. Klingon. It yeah. just doesn't doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, Kirk's fighting styles is obviously renowned for its uh, acrobatic complexity. It's yeah. it's a butt foo. Butt foo. <laughs> butt foo. <laughs> um, I do wonder where that all came from. I don't know if there was like uh, I don't. I'm sure they didn't have like a choreographers that. <laughs> they just like William Shatner fight this guy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from well, the mind of William Shatner, the, the flying butt punch. Well, and you know, uh, obviously, a lot of them they had, uh, you know, stunt doubles, uh, which a which a lot of times, especially if you watch it on Netflix in its high definition, you can see you it. can see it night and day. Especially the Kirk and Khan fight. Yeah, oh my gosh, very, it's so bad, very much so. You can so it's, yeah, it, it's, it's hilarious. To have the high def. They weren't expecting that. No, no, they didn't see that coming for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do wonder if that was something like all Shatner or was that something like somebody was like, well, why don't you give him like a, a two handed, uh, fist karate chop, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. It's so weird. Like you're actually going to hurt yourself way more doing a two handed fist punch. Yeah. Like you would like your <laughs> fingers are going to break, like snap. <laughs> he would hit him like on the small of the back and then right behind the neck with both his hands. Like, why would that? If you do with both hands clasped together, why would it do more damage? Because they think they're thinking like it's a club. Yeah. But realistically, you'd probably break your fingers doing that. I just don't think you would – I don't think you'd hit as powerfully as an, enough, you know? And not as fast, too. Like, they make it seem like it's fast, but they I They make think, it seem like a power punch. Like, bam, bam. Because you got twice the weight behind it because you got two hands. Right. No. Uh, I guess, you know. Yeah, I don't know. And maybe that is one part or aspect of the original series that is dated. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but That's, it's – that, that doesn't – really survive as well it's hilarious though. hey but the flying butt punch that that'll live on forever yeah because yeah. no who else has, who else has done flying that? butt punch was cool yeah yeah I, I i i do love i do love a a, a flying butt into i mean chung enemy. lee's uh you know spinning bird kick still a thing so i mean kirk's flying butt butt punch maybe maybe someone will reenact it in star trek discovery we can only hope Maybe maybe we'll show them like in 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 like the karate school for butt foo and they're like this is how you do the, <laughs> the right, maneuver, right, and then you can see where Kirk learned it from, like the, the whoever invented that attack. That would be awesome. Star Trek Discovery, yeah. you can take that idea for free. It's cool. Yeah, just steal it right from us because <laughs> I know you're listening. Because um, that's what they do. Yeah, they, they're scouring the internet for ideas. <laughs> Anything, please. Um, yeah, Kirk's fighting style is always unusual. Um, obviously. Spock just had the Vulcan nerve pinch, didn't do much of anything else. I, I don't really recall McCoy really getting too many fisticuffs. McCoy just would hypospray someone to sleep. Yeah. If he, if he had yeah. to if he had to do anything. He would just use drugs. Yeah. Scotty got <laughs> Scotty got in the bar fight and trouble for trouble. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh maybe a few other punches here and there, but Kirk was obviously the big fighter, so Yes, but he was equally as big a lover. Oh yes, he so, was. So he he had this, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. He's a little, he's a very physical man. That that he was. And speaking of physical man, we want to both sit on his lap uh, when he comes to tr- right. <laughs> Nick. When he comes to Nickel City, we're going to sit. It's like there. Santa Claus. It's like oh my god. I'm sure he'll do the the flying butt players on me too. <laughs> um, in his 80s, that would be amazing. I I need to have my camera on video camera for that. That'd be amazing. Just watch that. Yeah. We have. We'll yeah. put that on our YouTube channel if it happens. Absolutely. It'll be a, J- it'll be a GIF that just plays over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. that'd yeah. be amazing. As his, as his butt cheeks uh, surround my head and <laughs> crushes it like Khan crushed uh, Dr. Admiral Marcus's head. Yeah, so, it's amazing. Um, all right, so I have a tweet, too. Uh, this is from the Big Nerdy Questions podcast. And they they responded. They said, Star Trek inspired me to approach life with critical thinking and compassion for everyone, uh, even if we never met. And that's from Josh from the Big Nerdy Questions podcast. Podcast. So yeah, I mean, I I don't. That's pretty cool. I don't know anybody who actually who seriously watches Star Trek and doesn't walk away with their ethics and morality slightly changed, or know. or at least thought about at the very least. Yeah. Most people I know that that are have that are Star Trek fans are usually pretty decent people deep down. You know, they might be, you know, one way or the other, but they, you know, deep down they they hold those values almost the same. So I don't know. Yes, indeed. Thanks for thanks for tweeting us. Uh, another podcast listens to us. People know we exist. There's people <laughs> out there. We live out there. We live out in cyberspace for everyone to hear. 
Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I was uh, I was had this in depth conversation with a couple people, and they, we were talking about the ch- different. Um, I, I wonder if our geekdom and our you know nerdiness. I don't know if it's the humility that we had growing up, or if it was the um, just the 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 ethics that were taught to us through all our stories. If it was comic books, or if it was. Uh, you know, science fiction that we like, it's like, no, we have to be better people towards each other because these are the reasons, blah, 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 blah. You know, I wonder if that somehow just affects our deep down psyche and everything we do in, you know, in, in daily life. So I don't know. I, something I wonder. That's one of the things that's great about Star Trek. It's always trying to, it, it, usually, at least in the original series, especially, it's always trying to teach something and, you know, say this is good this is not good right uh like you know some people were like oh star trek versus star wars you know star trek is you know star wars is better because it's more action and stuff like that well let me star wars is, is its own thing star wars is the hero's hero's tale it's joseph campbell yeah. to the nth degree so just a, yeah 12 step hero journey yeah hero's it's, journey. it's yeah. Th- this is this is what star wars is star trek is aesop's fables in space it's yeah. trying to tell you something it's trying to tell you something important there may be action some episodes, there may be not action some episodes, but it's trying to tell you something. Right. Usually, right. Uh, that's what Star Trek is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we have one last email uh, from Shannon Stickle. Uh, congratulations on your 100th episode. I love listening to you guys. You're a lot of fun. I find myself responding to the podcast as it goes along very often. I look forward to hearing many more <laughs> episodes. Keep up the good work. LLAP, Shannon Stickle. Thank you so much, Shannon, for, 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 for e- emailing us. It's always great to hear from uh, people listen and uh you know she, she and i've been friends on facebook for almost two years almost as long as we've been on the uh doing the show so that's, that's awesome and it's nice to know like i said again that you know what you're throwing out there into the universe is actually you know affecting people in a positive way and you know that they they can enjoy it yeah most definitely and then that's that's why we're here we want people i mean we're here to have fun but we're also the secondary thing is that we hope people enjoy uh what what, what we do and and uh, can get a laugh out of it, and you know, hear about their favorite thing from you know our perspective, and just a bunch of guys sitting around a table drinking, or a guy pretending to drink. Yeah, I'm <laughs> pretending right now, <laughs> even as we speak. He wishes he had a drink in his hand. <laughs> there are times <laughs> <laughs> when he's dealing with us. <laughs> There's not enough alcohol in the world. Of course. <laughs> to be fair, it's par for the course. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so it's cool. We got a uh, hundred episodes under our belt. Um, who knows how long we'll go to two hundred, three hundred? I don't know. I can't even. I mean, there's seven hundred something episodes of Star Trek. I, I mean, can't even can just... imagine. You know, <laughs> that's true. If we did one synthaholics for every episode of Star Trek, we'd have two hundred or seven hundred and twenty-six episodes. Yeah, that's not including Discovery. Yeah, we, we don't even know how many so... episodes we'll have. Yeah, who knows? Probably like a hundred. Okay. Probably like a hundred. Because it's going to be a short series, or less, it'll be less than 100, probably like 70, probably between 70 and 80 if it yeah. goes seven seasons. Yeah, because it, it, if it goes seven seasons, then that would be episodes. 10 episodes a season. Yeah. Wow. That'd be ironic because it would have would have almost as many as the original series. I know, right? That would be so wild. But I bet you... Seven years and the same as the original series. Yeah, That'd but I bet you they'll have more of a congruent uh, storyline. Because, you know, obviously the original yeah. series was all... You know, first episode to episode, episode to episode, and that uh, you know, obviously the effects and everything are going to be a lot more robust. Sure. Yeah, I can't wait to see what's going on with Discovery. I, I can't wait to see what we're going to do in our next hundred episodes. Uh, it's just, it's just amazing. And, and thank you, everyone who who listens to the show for listening. I mean, it's it's huge that uh, you guys are, are there and and keep listening to little old us. And, yeah, uh, thank you for listening, and for, and for everyone who contributed, uh, thank you so much. Because I mean, we really wanted this episode to be about you guys, to, yeah. for you guys to reach out to us, and we could read your stuff or let, or actually have your voice played to the audience, and then uh, and then we could respond to it uh, in, in the way you know the way we usually respond to things, <laughs> <laughs> like a bunch of dumbasses. Yes, I was trying to be uh, diplomatic. I think the word you're looking for is irreverent. Yes. Yes. Pretty much. I was trying to be irreverent. But yes, very, very much so. Um, so, uh, again, thank you, everyone. It's, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure. It's been a blast being here uh, for these 100 episodes. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we're uh, approaching our third season. Third season. season. <laughs> Crazy. Nice. Our third year's coming up. 
Yeah. Um, nice. So it's, it's Thanks be... for having me on board too. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, like Acting wrapping up the the first year for Guy Davis. Yeah, yeah. We're starting starting our second year with Guy Davis coming up soon. So this will be fun. Poor It'll guy. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You guys are a lot of fun. You're a great podcast. So I mean, it, it's not you know. I mean, the duct tape gets it chafes a little, but <laughs> but you know we're we're good. We're good. Stockholm syndrome is set in. Yes, Stockholm syndrome good. setting in. Very good. <laughs> nice. Well, you can find uh, all our music is provided by Warp Eleven. You can find them at warp eleven dot com or warp eleven on Twitter. You can find us. On Twitter at Synthaholic Duo, me personally, David underscore J underscore Duncan. I'm at Blackbird2004. Guy. And I'm at GS Davis Art. And um, US is Tamline. Uh, if, if you want to follow the Facebook discussion, you can find us at facebook.com slash group slash Synthaholics. You can email us at Synthaholics at yahoo.com. Give us stars, ratings, and reviews. We need these to be seen uh, in the charts so more people can find the show. Because some people just look for Star Trek or look for other stuff. And, and if we're not, if we don't have new stars and new and uh, you know, new ratings and new reviews, we don't get the, you know, where people are, where we're not easily seen by new people looking for Star Trek. So please send those, uh, send those in, click on them. I know sometimes it's a pain in the butt to do reviews on iTunes. I've done a couple. I'm like, why is this such a difficult process? But it's it's annoying sometimes. But please, uh, if you could take a couple minutes out of your day and and give us some stars and give us some ratings, uh, it would it would help us out immensely. Absolutely, and you know, and it's typing in your credit card numbers faster. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I just on top of that thought too is if you have any friends or anybody you might know that might enjoy our episodes or our show, you know, obviously let them know. Word of mouth is wonderful. You can tweet us, uh, share our episodes on Facebook or any other platforms you're using. Oh, I, I love it when I see other people share share my stuff. I just get I just feel all fuzzy inside. I'm like, yeah, someone shared this. Someone liked it enough to share it. It, it really uh, means the world to us when when you when uh, we get comments. I, I try to respond to them as, as often as possible. Uh, when I share them out, um, so thank you so much when you share and, and like uh, our stuff on Facebook and on you know iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, wherever we are, we, we really appreciate it. And like I was saying before, if typing your credit cards quicker, we do have a Patreon. So if you want to support us in, in, in that way, uh, we have some rewards where we try to do uh, different things uh, for you guys, depending on which which tier you set up. So. Um, you can check that out at uh, patreon.com slash synthaholics. And if you want to support Guy and his art with the USS Tamerlan and Witches of Flame, you can uh, check him out at patreon.com slash art. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you again all so much for listening. Live long and prosper, my friends. You're the best drinking friend I ever had. One hundred. One hundred. <laughs> and we were worried it was taking a hey, we wouldn't get an hour out of that. What do we get? <laughs> was that over an hour? Uh it's an hour and thirty three minutes. Oh, all right. Yeah, I was just uh, with, saying, with, I, I figured that was more than an hour. For um oh, gosh. <laughs> Hundred episodes. In the first edit. Ah, ah. Cutting that out. <laughs>